two? Four. Four. Cool. And everyone, I'm not, we don't see the image of G, do we? The function. Wait, how did you get G of two again? Uh, we plugged in two right here, uh -huh. and then we got the areas. Areas, oh, okay, up to two. Okay. There you go. Good job. Now everyone, I want you to get G of four. Now, take it slow. What does that mean? Substitute four where? Into here, and it replaces that with a what? With the four. four. Good, so I'm going to write it. I'm going to put a big wall. That means do the integral from one to what? Four. Four. And we got to accumulate the entire area from one to four. But why did I use straight lines? Because we know how to find the area of triangles and rectangles, right? Mm -hmm. Do you all agree if I made some goofy curve, you'd be sitting here going, we don't know how to get the area of that curve. Professor. Yeah. We don't need to do 1 to 4. We already did 1 to 2, so we can just do 2 to 4 and add it up, right? Brilliant. Do you want to agree? Do you all agree with them? You say, listen, save some time here. If we now got to get the area from 1 to 4, we already found the area from 1 to what? 2. 2. Let's keep that, and then we'll add it to the area that's what? 2, two to 4. four yeah. So it's a good idea. Leave this here. Don't erase that. So 4 and then 5. And then is that a triangle or rectangle? Triangle. So let me I'll just draw an area. you got to do half base height. Now be careful, what's that base length? Two. 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 Height is three. Height is three. Three? Mm -hmm. three. I know sometimes you know, when in the problems in the book, you get the point fives to come up, right? But what's half of two times three? Three. three. Now, all right, I like your logic. I think people agree with you. Add all that up. How much is it coming out to be? Three plus three. Does that one agree? Now, can you get a sense of what's going on with function g? It keeps going up, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Look, we don't see g, do we? But the function g, continuous function, is what? It's increasing, isn't it? All right, OK. <laughs> no. So far, so good? Like, some of you might have gone off to the side and make an image of g. You might go, let me see what g's doing. Look, just off the, look, here's g. We at least we've got a few points. What was going on, what was going on at 1? 0. What was going on at 2? One, two, three, four. And what was going on at four? So. Okay. Just, just an idea, right? Maybe it curves another way, but this is what's going on. Going here, and it's going here, and it's going here. Now, I want you to find one more thing. Be careful. You bet, we're going to use all that information to get this. But now, this function has gone underneath the what? Axis. X axis. We'll find that area, but we're going to assign a negative value to it. What's the y value? The y value right there? Yeah, I'm going to make that clear. Thanks, Kel. How about we make that? I'm going to make this so nice. How about negative 3? Negative 3? Yeah, I'm going to make that go down to everyone in this image. This is going to line up to the value right there. That's going to be g equal to negative 3. So won't we be finding the area of the entire triangle instead? We're going to get that area right there. Are you going to subtract we're going to find it, and we're going to subtract it from so this last gonna, value. So first you're going to find the area of the entire thing, and then subtract yep. the there you go. area between 5 and 6. Very good. Or now four, what's this area? Okay. So what's the that area right there? Base is 2. Half base. And height is negative 3. And the height is negative 3. See, that's the y value. And you go, why are we making this negative? This is the reason why. This, that's why I wanted to leave this up here today. This all came from this. And when you see right there, that says f of x. And f of x takes on negative values when it's underneath the what? x-axis. So when we do this, we're saying 1 half 2 times negative uh, 3. And most students just go, I'll get the area of that triangle and put a negative value to it, right? So now. To get this, I'm going to take the previous answer of all the sum from 1 to 4, which was how much? 7. 7, but then I'm going to have to subtract out three. this 3 we're getting. Aha. Okay. Uh -huh. So when you see why I'm subtracting 3, because of the what? Yeah. The area. If it goes underneath that x-axis, negative, right? Isn't it because that's the area? Yep. Yeah. So now 7 minus 3 is? 4. All right. All right. So hey, come on over. We were thinking about G, right? What happened at s what number? We got what went on at six? Oh, at zero. Eh. 
Went down. Ah, uh, went back down to a what? Negative four. Well, I think of negative, but what was its value at six? Four. Oh, um, right? Hey, G1, it was zero. <coughs> and two got up to four. And four got up to how high? Got up to seven. Then back at G at six, G got to what value? Four. True? So, oh, here's my next question. Part B. Because anyway, this is what they do in this problem. And letter B. Find the absolute value max. Of G. On the closed interval. One. To six. And when I want you to find the absolute maximum value of G on the closed interval one four. to six. That takes equals to four. We have enough information to get this. What's the highest it reaches? Four. All right. So I want to write out a sentence. The absolute max of G on this interval occurs. At x equal to, let's fill in a blank right there, and is, let's fill in this blank. So from 1 to 6, what's the highest value that g ever took on? That's why I was making this image. I think you can see it. What was the highest it got up to? Got up to what? 7. And when did it occur? At what x value? At x equal to 4, and it reached how much? 7. Does someone agree? Now, guess what? We the derivative. Do you remember the last test? It was on the second page. I gave you a derivative graph, mm -hmm. and you had to come up with the original. You had to come up with all these questions about the derivative. Mm -hmm. Fundamental theorem of calculus. What's g prime of x equal to? F. This is G prime. This oh, yeah. is G prime. Now, when I know it says F, I was building G over here, but this is also what? G prime. G, would you make a note? Just go, aha, this is G prime. That's what's going on here. And do you remember the connection? Look, think about the last test. Remember when you looked at something that went like this? That meant it was a max value of what? Of G. Do you remember this? Mm -hmm. That's why I wanted you to see this connection. This is the function F, right? And here you and I, we just answered this question. We found all these G values. We kind of built G from those values. The max occurred at 4. What happened on this graph? It was going where? Because this is really what graph? This is G prime. And when G prime is 0, that means it's a what? An extreme value, max or min, right? Huh. So the graph you built up there, the what? That's G prime. Nope, I want to be clear. This would be just G. This would be G. That guy would be G prime. Okay. And we go, oh, G prime is equivalent to F. And we're looking at this going, oh, yeah, fundamental theorem of calculus. G prime would just be F without that interval. Do you see the connection? Yeah, I got it. Does everyone see this connection? That's why I wanted to sell you on that, because I wanted you to see this, what's going on with this interval. I know, because you're like, well, what is this? Where is this needed? We're able to go, aha, okay, I get it now. Right here. That would be G prime, graph on what? Positive slope to what? Negative. Negative slope. We're like, yep, we can see it. Is that one following? Oh, so from G prime, we're constructing G graph. That's right. So, but that is not only absolute max, that's also local max too. The yep, it would be a local max too. Very good. We were able to say absolute max because notice what I did. I closed off the one. Interval. The interval. So that's why I put absolute max on there. Now, and what I'm going to put a part C down. I want to show you what a lot of students put for the answer. Josephine, I don't want you to make this little error. It takes on a minus one. Here it comes. This is the killer question. Then tell me, what is this equal to? You've got to fill in this blank. You've got to fill in this blank. I'm going to screw it up, and I want you to correct me. Ready? Because you're like, I know the fundamental theorem of calculus. There's g of x, right? Uh -huh. I get this a lot. You ready? 
They're close. But they say that. They almost had it. They missed one of the variables. It's got to be what letter? X. People go, why is it T? It's got to be X. Because it's the idea of this is what? Getting sub 2. Now I'll put a smiley face. Uh, there we go. It's G prime of X is what? F of X. There it is. There it is. G prime of X is F of X. Isn't that cool? But bell rash is not a T, right? Because this is in terms of what? X. The variable X. And that's getting substituted every time. Cool. So hey, I know when you go, when would you really got to think about this? It'd be for this problem or the other example where I'll, I'll show you again where if they had something, I'll put it really small here. If they said g of x equals, I'll put a zero, x, and they go x to the fifth power, or excuse me, t to the fifth power dt, and then they ask you for g prime. You don't have to go do the integral and take the derivative. You know g prime of x will just be this one. That right there and substitute what variable for t? You go, why? Because of fun FTC part one. Cool? But the rest of the class, we're going to play with this. Now, everyone, for practice, would you try uh, number three on page 394? I put it as a practice problem. The author started at zero. Okay? I could have started this at zero. What would have happened? We would have got the area where? From zero. Yeah, we would have started getting all that area. Does that make sense? If I started this at zero, we would have got this area in there too. Everyone okay with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah? All right. Hey, and most importantly, don't forget when it goes underneath, what do we got to do? Subtract out, right? If you started at zero, all those areas would change. You were right. That number would change, that number would change, this number would change, and that number would change because if you start at zero, what are we including? What's, oh, you're good. You're like you're adding this amount to every one of those values. This would have probably went up to what? If we got that area in there, we could probably find it real quick. If you wanted to do it. I think we should do it right for a race. What's that area right there? All right, that's three. Now, let's see here that little triangle. Yeah, half of one times two is one. So, how would, if I do this, ready everyone? This is Josephine's point. That's good. If that was zero, and this was zero, and this was zero, and this was zero, and this right here was also zero. These would all change. This one would be three times. Three plus one is three. Four. Do you agree the area underneath from zero to one is three. Four. Now, and when sum the area from zero to two. Is that eight? And when Eric, you add all those up. Three plus six plus one plus one, eight. Uh, add this one up. What's that go up to? 11. And then lastly, you got to take the 11 and subtract out the 1. 3. So everything got shifted up by how much? 1. That's what happened. Right? Each one of them. 4, 4, 4, 4. Can I raise? Yeah? Have some fun. Let's have some fun now. So all that's 5 3 stuff, but now I'm going to bring in the F 5 2 stuff. We're going to do some definite intervals. Okay? Here's my first one. Now, I am hoping. We're going to do this two ways, okay? Two ways. One way is, let's find the antiderivative. We're going to substitute what? 2 pi and 0, and we're going to get the answer, right? And we always do a subtraction, true? Mm -hmm. But I also want you to think of the image. And sometimes, don't forget about what you're trying to find. Who knows about the function sine of x? From 0 to goes up, or 0 to 1. Yeah, Josephine, you know the function sine of x, right? It does the little what? Goes up, it goes down, right? I said, hey, know that trig sheet? Everyone, you only got to know those basic functions. Sine of x, cosine of x. This function did what? 
at pi it got back down to zero, right? Mm -hmm. And then at two pi it came back like this. Don't agree? Mm -hmm. Aren't these areas symmetrical? Mm -hmm. Now don't shout out the answer. A lot of people already know the answer to this question based off this concept we've been talking about. A lot of people in class go, I know the answer. Because we're going to do what? We're going to take this area, positive value, and then we're going to subtract out this one. Area. I mean, who already knows the answer to this problem because of symmetry? Look at the hands. That's more than half the class. What is it? The answer is one. And I love that. And when I love it, you're able to say, hey, listen, you can waste your time doing the math, but the answer's got to be what? Zero, because we have knowledge of this function. It's an odd function, but we know these areas have to be symmetrical. Mm -hmm. Positive minuses. But can we check it? What should we get for our answer? Zero. All right, let's do it now. Antiderivative cos. Oh, is it negative cos? Is it mm -hmm. positive cos? Negative, negative. Every calc student misses these up. We don't want to mix one up on a test. So, S C S C S. Which way are we going for integral? Up. Up. Right. All right, now we're going up for integral, right? Going up for integral, so the antiderivative of sine is? Negative cosine x. Do I have to put the plus c bell range? No. Good, He's, because these have numbers on them. It's a definite integral. Okay. I go off to the side and I put a little vertical wall, right? Go ahead. Can you explain why you're not putting the plus c? Oh, because these have numbers on the, these limits right here. They're called the limits of integration. So, I could do a plus C, but what's going to happen, I want you to see why they're just mean. If I put a plus C here, I'm going to substitute what in here? 2 pi for what value? I mean, for what variable, excuse me. I'm going to substitute 2 pi in for the X, then I'm going to substitute 0 in for the X, and I'm going to subtract them. I'm not substituting it into this constant C, and don't we always subtract? Right? Don't we always subtract? So what's going to happen?